Recently, I've been really interested in this one YouTube channel called Truddle One, where they basically talk about different SOLangs, which are essentially just programming language, but designed to be not good. And I thought it was really interesting, so I was like, okay, I'm gonna try making my own. And since I don't know the majority of SOLangs that exist, there's like probably a 30% chance that my, this is almost identical to an existing one, so uh, hopefully it's not. But basically, um, I have this extremely long document I wrote about it. Uh, I'm not gonna go over the entire language in this, I'm just gonna show a couple things and be like, yeah, mmm, so cool, or something, I don't know. It's basically, the main concept behind this language was that it was gonna be where every line is a variable. So here's the, this is like the most basic method basically, it's the print method. So this is just shows an example of how every line is a variable. Okay, so first of all, the syntax of this language is weird. You put the first instruction before the actual instruction itself, and then if you have a second one, you put it after. So in this example, this would be, it would print one. However, it doesn't print that number one, it prints whatever the number at line one is. So, I actually did make a little uh, interpreter thingy for this. Okay, so if I have, so if I put this program in, which just sets a number to 10 and then prints it, if I paste it in here, it prints out 10. Because this value is 10, it prints that value, this is line one, um, because declaring a method within each method, because I, for some reason, actually implemented methods instead of just making this like the most painful thing to work in, the first line is considered line one. So that's pretty boring. So next, I'm gonna show a slightly more interesting program. This is the hello world program, and it's kind of weird because basically you create a method hello and a method world, and then you print each one because so, if you're familiar with SLANGs, basically, a large amount of SLANGs, um, basically can only store numbers. Meaning that if you want to print text, you have to print it one character at a time, usually there's some way to print a number as an ASCII character. So, I, since I wanted this to be a little less painful, I added an alternate way. So, you can still type characters one at a time, but I made it so there's this one other method, there's this called the type method, which types the name of the method it's currently within. However, method names can have spaces, so line one runs the hello method, which doesn't actually use the variables, because basically, I should explain this a little better first. So, when a method is run, line one and two will have their values replaced with the, in with the values inputted into the method. So this 32 goes here, but the type method doesn't take any input, so it just ignores that. And then the type function just types the ASCII character that corresponds to the inputted number, so it takes 32, which is the space character, and then world just prints world. So this is just the, the basic Hello World program. I, I hope I didn't explain that terribly, but I probably did. Um, if this sounds at all interesting, there's a thing in the description. So as you can see, hello world, whoa, now that's still pretty boring. So I have made a couple more complex programs. This is probably the most interesting one, which is the calculator. Because basically, and the reason why I think this is cool, I've never made a calculator program in like an SO lang before, so normally whatever programming language you use would have a, a way to add, subtract, multiply, and divide built in, however, um, in my infinite wisdom, I only put the add function built in. Meaning that in order to make a calculator, you have to make your own way of subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. Now luckily since I did ha I at least have methods, it means that you can just make a method that you call to divide and add and whatever. So basically, because what it does is it uses a couple new methods that I haven't talked about yet. Um, so also as you can see the main method, really small. All it does is it runs the operation function, and then it sets a value to zero, and then it p inputs that value into the calculator method. So first of all, the operation method is all the way down here. So first it does type method, which just types its name, it puts operation into the console, and then I just made another function that types a question mark. Then it runs the snag function. Now this function, you might not know what it does, and that is because it has a really bad name. Because 
This is the input function. This is how you get input from the console from the user. And I just called it snag for no reason. It basically takes input from the user and turns it into an ASCII character if it's not already a number. And then it sets it, since it has an input of 1, it means it sets line 1 to be that. Then 1 return means that this um, method will return the value at line 1, which is whatever you take. And by the way, this is, yeah. And then the return um, puts it here. For some reason, I sense you can't put a method in place of a variable. Like, I couldn't say, like, operation... I couldn't say like operation calc, you can't put this in place of a number, so when it returns, it just sets the value on the next line to whatever it returns, which is why it, that value at line 2 gets inputted to here. And now in the calc method, this is where it does the, the actual calculation. So at the start, this just, this first number is whatever the operation was, gets inputted into here. Then it runs the number function twice, which acts the same as operations function. It just prints number instead, and then sets this value and this value. Now these next four values are basically just constants, because the thing is, most methods take in a line number as input, and then use value at that line number. So if you want to like have something that's 46, there has to be a line with the value 46. And basically what these do is, the way that I check which value which symbol is inputted into the calculator is by checking if it's greater than each of these because each one of these is one less than one of the corresponding symbols so and then e here are each of the four things that checks for one of the inputs so basically what it does is it checks if one which is the number corresponding to the ASCII character of the symbol you put in which sounds really complicated but basically this means it checks it checks which operation you want to do, and the way that the compare function works is it checks if the um, value inputted before it is greater than the value inputted after, and if it is, it will run the next line of code. If it isn't, it will skip one line of code and go here. So basically it compares that and then runs a division function, this would be if it's division, and then it compares it again, it just does the same thing, I didn't really add a way to do like actual if statements, so you need a new one every line. Either that, or there's a function that acts like a go-to function that allows you to go to a set line. And then it just transports, what it does is the value at line 4, which is this 0, to line 1, which means that it will, which prevents any of the functions after from activating because the, whatever you put in, you inputted is now replaced with a 0, which will not be greater than any of these values, which and it just does that three more times for each other function. And I'm not really going to go over how I actually implemented multiplication, um, subtraction, and division. Or, I won't go in detail. Basically, this method is the multiplication method. What it does is it, it takes in two values and then adds one of the values to zero the amount of times of the other value. So if you put in four and two, it'll add four to zero twice, which is eight, and then output it. Then the subtraction method the way that this works is there's there's not really a way to make a negative number normally. So what you have to do is basically use the multiplication function to multiply one of the numbers by negative one and then add to the other to subtract it. Which is kind of dumb, but that's how you, that's the best way I could think of without adding any new methods. Then the division basically checks how many of the second value are in the first value and outputs that. So it does round down, um, it, I don't have like access to um, doubles or floats or whatever in this, so yeah. And also, it doesn't work very well, because if you divide by something that would round down to zero, it will always output at least one, which is kind of bad design, but I haven't really bothered to fix it. But most of the time it works, in most situations. But if I input it in, it asks me for the operation, I'm going to put, uh, I'll do minus, then the first number, so I'll say like 90, the second number 35, and it outputs 55, because that's the answer. And I'm just going to show another example. So division, I'll say 77 divided by 7 is 11. So good. This is like such a great calculator, totally efficient. And I haven't made much more complicated stuff. There's a lot of stuff I didn't go over, so like, if you want to look at this awful language, you can. It's, it's like kind of interesting and it's probably Turing complete. I haven't like actually 
verified that, but based on the function I've, I've added, I think it would be. Oh, also, I made it in Java because um, I, I made it at school and that's all I have access to at school. If Yeah. Uh, I think I'm gonna put a download to the files so you can import it into like Eclipse or whatever if you want to run it for some reason, as well as a link to this document which has all of the information about it and I'm like 90% sure that there's not any false information. Oh, also the language is called Lie Number, I forgot to mention that one. Anyway, bye I guess. That... <laughs>